Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today I am going to share with you some exciting new perennials that I am very excited about for 2024. This is the perfect time to begin planning and dreaming of next year's gardens. Go ahead and get those pre-orders in. You can order from gardeningwithcreekside.com and we will get you these beautiful perennials at the appropriate time next spring. Clearly the greenhouses are empty. We do not uh, have these perennials ready to send you yet, nor is it time. So if you do pre-order with Gardening with Creekside, don't worry, we're not gonna send them to you until it is appropriate for your gardening zone. These are gonna be some really fun, fun perennials. Of course, the Prima Winter perennials come from our friends at Walters Gardens. They just do an amazing job uh, breeding, developing, finding these beautiful perennials that thrive in just a wide range of conditions. So I am going to share with you some of the ones that I am most excited about for 2024. Ms. America. Now, Miss America, we actually had um, here at the nursery this year, I planted it in the woodland garden up close to the entrance to the, the nursery. And this is going to be a really, really spectacular hosta in the fact of it is variegated. So we love variegated hostas. <laughs> and Miss America, she's a big girl. She can be um, only 19 inches tall. So for a hosta, that's not so bad, uh, but 55 inches wide. So it is going to be nice and big, right? So America from sea to shining sea. So Miss America has taken up a long, uh, spot in your garden for sure. Now what's great about Miss America is her color, right? So she's got these beautiful, more like a little bit of a heart-shaped leaf to it with it has a darker, like a medium green on the outside with a white center and then has some of that green veining in it. Beautiful, beautiful plant. Obviously hostas are going to be on your, in your shade garden. So they can do full to part shade depending on where you are. Where I am in North Carolina is zone 8A. I can do a little bit of morning sun or filtered sun, but definitely not any hot afternoon sun that will fry my hosta. If you are in a cooler climate, then maybe your hostas are gonna be a little bit more sun tolerant. So this is where being a student of your own garden is very, very important. Miss America, like most hostas, is going to be a perennial in zones three to nine. Getting on into some of the new introductions that I'm very excited about. Some of these I do have um, some experience with and some I do not. I will be getting them this year and looking forward to it. One that I definitely have experience with is the new Artemisia Silver Lining. This is such a fun, beautiful foliage plant for your garden. The Artemisia Silver Lining is going to be a nice spreading habit to it. It's gonna be 12 to 16 inches tall, but 32 to 36 inches wide. You're gonna to wanna to use this more as a ground cover. I personally have it more in the front of my garden. So it's kind of right there on the edge. So it'll get nice and spread out. Of course, Artemisias are known for their beautiful silver foliage. It's gonna be hardy in zones four to nine, and it is going to be a full sun plant. Full sun, and it is native to North America. Now what makes silver lining different than other artemisias is that as it spreads out and it goes that 36 inches out, it is not going to root all the way around because sometimes that can be really pesky with your artemisias when you go in there for your fall cleanup is that as the branches have laid down, they have rooted and it's very hard to then clean the plant up. Silver lining keeps its main um, root system in the center. So just like when I did uh, this past week, all I had to do is take my pruners and go around and clean it up and it was very easy. But a beautiful silver presence in your garden and will accent those other plants um, that have that darker foliage. Just a great one. Never underestimate the power of foliage. You don't have to have flowers in order for it to be spectacular and attractive in your garden. And silver lining is an example of that. Next, Baptisia periwinkle popsicle. I am a huge fan of Baptisia. These are gorgeous early spring bloomers that tend to bring height to our garden. So they are great for the middle or the back of the border. 
periwinkle popsicle is going to be a little bit different than other Baptisia in the fact that it is going to be a later bloomer. Personally, I love that because it extends my bloom season. So you can have, you know, multiple different varieties of Baptisia in your garden, and you're going to extend that bloom season by having that periwinkle popsicle being a later bloomer. It is going to be, of course, this beautiful, rich periwinkle color that has more of that upright habit to it, right? So it's going to be four feet tall at maturity and 36 inches wide. That's the beautiful thing about Baptisias is that they tend to have more of a vase-like habit. So more narrow at the bottom and then as they get to the top, they will spread out. Periwinkle popsicle being that four feet, depending on your flower bed and what you have in there, I would definitely say it's gonna go into the middle or the back of the flower bed. Hardy in zones four to nine, so very adaptable. They're gonna do full to part sun. I have found that for me in North Carolina, zone 8A, mine are in full sun. If, they, if I don't, don't get enough sun, my Baptisia will be floppy and not nice and strong and upright, and I don't get a lot of flowers. So if you have that problem with your Baptisia, you may not get, be getting enough sunlight. At a minimum, five hours. Five hours all the way up to a full day. Baptisia, as a general rule, tend to be more deer resistant. Now notice I said deer resistant, not deer proof, because every time I come on and do a video and say that this plant is deer resistant, there will forever be that one person that goes, oh my gosh, the deer love my, and then fill in the blank. So deer resistant, not deer proof. So love that the periwinkle popsicle is a later bloomer that actually, in my opinion, is a great thing because it extends that beautiful uh, bloom season of the Baptisias that I adore. Next, Clematis Stand By Me Pink. Now we have the Stand By Me, which was a beautiful blue. Now we have the pink. This is going to be an herbaceous Clematis, meaning that at the end of the season, winter, spring, you can cut it completely down to the ground because all of that growth from that previous year is going to die and all of the new growth is gonna come from your root system. So it's not gonna bloom on old growth. It blooms on that new fresh growth, which means of course, we are guaranteed to have flowers on the Stand By Me Pink. Speaking of flowers, of course it is a Stand By Me Pink. So it is going to be a beautiful pink flower, um, almost like a little bit of a bell shape to them. And the plant is absolutely gonna be covered in these beautiful flowers starting in late spring and then kind of throughout all the way through the summer. This is gonna be a nice petite one. So you can use it, you can go ahead and stake it if you want to, or you can plant it beside of other plants that will help support it. It's only gonna be 38 to 42 inches tall and 24 to 24, 24 to 26 inches wide. So it's definitely gonna be as most clematis are, right? It's gonna be taller than it is wide. Hardy end zones three to seven. Now you may say, well, Jenny, you're a zone eight. You're talking about this is hardy in zones three to seven. So yes, it is. So that's great for you colder people. Um, but and I had always kind of shied away from this plant, but Kata, our beloved Kata from Walker's Gardens has had some customers in our same growing zone that has had great results with this Clematis and that Stand By Me series. So we are going to give it a whirl. In fact, we already have some in the signature garden. So this is gonna be really fun to try out. It is full to part sun. So because I am in a, on the warmer zone of this plant, I'm putting mine in areas where it's gonna get a, a break from the hot afternoon sun. They are both deer and rabbit resistant. So if you have critter problems, then that will be maybe a great option for you to try that Stand By Me pink. Next, so this is going to be uh, brand new ones on the market from Proven Winners. These are Delospermas. Delosperma is commonly known as an ice plant. These are tough, tough evergreen perennials that love the heat and humidity. They love to be in those hot, uh, tough conditions. Really fun colors within this series. So first we have Razzle Dazzle. That's a great name, isn't it? Razzle Dazzle. So Razzle Dazzle has fuchsia purple um, flowers that then transition to raspberry red 
with a cream center. So if you like really like bold colors in your garden, then Razzle Dazzle is gonna be a great one for you. As all ice plants are, they're gonna be nice and short, but they spread. It's only gonna be two to four inches tall. So very much that ground cover habit on it, and it can spread up to two feet. So this would be a great area for those um, problem areas where it's dry and it's hot. And you don't know what to put out there. Try Razzle Dazzle. It's hardy in zones 5B to 10. Very heat tolerant, full sun. And like I said, they are evergreen and they are deer resistant. Within that same series, we also have Pink Radiance. Pink Radiance is going to have light pink flowers with rosy purple centers. So it'll still be only two to four inches tall, up to two feet wide, same hardiness zone of that 5B to 10, and of course that full sun. So really fun new plant that is gonna be added into this perennial collection uh, because ice plant of course is extremely well known. This is one of, one of those plants we could say is, it's your grandmama's plant, right? Your grandmother could have grown Delosperma. I guarantee you though, she did not have the colors of Razzle Dazzle and pink radiance. So check those out. Daylilies. Daylilies are one of the iconic perennials that are found in so many gardens across the world. These are just amazing plants. And I personally think that Proven Winners does the best job on their daylilies because they are um, such low maintenance, high performing, beautiful, massive flowers on them. We're gonna have Blazing Glory introduced this year. Now, Blazing Glory has six inch flowers on them that are a golden yellow that have a really bold burgundy eye. So the center and then the edge is also. So it has a little bit of a frilly edge on it and it has that beautiful, that burgundy both in the center and then on the edge. It makes a really nice statement in the garden, of course. Now, blaze, uh, Blazing Glory is gonna be 32 inches tall, and that would include the flower on it, and 18 to 24 inches wide. So it's gonna be a little bit more compact as far as you're not gonna have the massive spread on it as some daylilies will get, but it will still have um, a really nice height to it. So this would be perfect for like the medium, medium size in your bed right there in the middle. Party in zones three to nine, full to part sun. And daylilies tend to be more rabbit resistant, not necessarily deer resistant, but rabbit resistant. And then of course your pollinators love these. I've noticed my hummingbirds love coming to my daylilies. So look for blazing glory for that nice yellow, golden yellow and burgundy color. If you wanna do something a little bit different as far as your colors go, check out Blood, Sweat and Tears. I love this name. I joke and I say every gardener can, um, you know, can relate to a blood, sweat, and tears in the garden, right? Well, blood, sweat, and tears daylily is going to have beautiful raspberry red um, color to it with a rosy pink eye and a yellow throat. So you've got more of um, that pinky red color with the blood, sweat, and tears. It's going to be 28 inches tall, so it's going to be a little bit shorter than Blazing Glory. Still 18 to 24 inches wide, still already in zones three to nine, and then that full to part sun. We have the Blood, Sweat, and Tears in both the Signature Garden and the Privacy Berm, and I cannot wait till they get into their full mature size. So this year they will do great. Uh, they did great this, this year in 2023. So next year will be their second year in the ground. So we'll see some great improvement. And then that third year, of course, we like to give our plants three years with our perennials and our shrubs. You really gotta give them about three years to reach their mature size and their full potential. And then that's when you can go, yes, we have uh, made it successfully. Next, Proven Winners is definitely known for their perennial hibiscus. The Summerific series is this great series that is developed by our friends at Walter's Gardens. And this is one of the most anticipated hibiscuses, I think, that has hit the market in quite a while. Cookies and cream. Cookies and cream is going to be exceptionally compact, nice, small, tight habit on it, 
it is gonna be two to three feet tall and then three and a half to four feet wide. Whereas other um, perennial hibiscus in that summerific series can be um, a nice height. Some of them can be up to like five feet tall and more narrow. Well, the cookies and cream is definitely gonna be the most compact one at only two to three feet tall. It is hardy in zones four to nine, but I mean, I think you can tell by looking at the picture how it got its name, that nearly black foliage with those pure white flowers. So beautiful and so fun. The summerifics, of course, do need that full sun to be uh, nice and tight and get that true coloration on them, whatever it may be. So if you don't have um, the color on your flowers and you don't have the number of flowers, or like with the cookies and cream being black, if you have more of a green foliage, it's probably not getting enough sun. So make sure that they get that minimum of five hours of sun. And then the summerifics do love water. So if you have an area in your garden that tends to be um, a little bit more damp or water tends to you know, go there or collect, put a summerific there. It will love it. It will soak up all that water and it will grow before your eyes and you will get continuous blooms all summer long. The summerifics do tend to be more deer resistant. So you can keep that in mind if you seem to have a little bit of deer pressure in your garden. These are two that I have not grown these specific ones, but I am very, very excited to try them out. We have two new colors of penstemons. So we have penstemon pink pearls. Pink pearls is going to be um, a beautiful kind of a medium-sized plant that will bloom in late spring to early summer, medium pink flowers. Gorgeous. Is it not stunning? We tend to think of penstemons in that blue purple um, flower color, but this pink pearls has that beautiful medium pink flower to it. Um, it is going to have that, of course, that nice dark green foliage on it. It's going to be 16 to 20 inches tall, 20 to 24 inches wide. Penstemons are known for being drought tolerant. They love the full sun. They are very low fuss plants. They are not going to be the divas in the garden. But looking at this plant, she looks like a diva, but she's not one. Hardy in zones five to eight definitely needs the full sun. So you need a minimum of six hours for this plant to perform as it should. And then, of course, the hummingbirds are massively attracted to those beautiful pink flowers. And it is exceptionally bee friendly. So you are going to be attracting all of the uh, wonderful garden friends that we love having in our garden with pink pearls. We're going to have another color as well. We have rose rhinestones. Now, the main difference between the pink pearls and rose rhinestones is that rose rhinestones has a deeper rose pink um, of the flower. It's almost like a darker red flower than the pink pearls. So if you're looking for maybe a um, more pink color, you go with pink pearls. If you want that really intense, deep, rich pink slash red color, then maybe rose rhinestones, or you can be like me and just do them both. Why choose? Just do them both, y'all. You've got some room in your garden, and if you don't, I'm sure there's a plant somewhere that's not performing, and out they go, and then, you know, rose rhinestones. I mean, the name alone, you've got to have some rose rhinestones in your garden, right? I love it. Another difference between rose rhinestones and then the pink pearls is going to be the height. So pink pearls is going to be a little bit taller at that 16 to 20. Rose rhinestones is going to be a little bit shorter, 14 to 16. So about four inches shorter, right? So you could, um, depends on where you have them, where you pl place them in your garden, um, you can definitely have them both. But I love that it's going to be that late spring, early summer bloomers. And then, of course, you keep that foliage. Yeah, um, for us, it's a year round. So we will have um, my mound year round. So I always know that it is there. Also, something to think about with these new penstemons, the breeding that went into these penstemons um, is just really exceptional. They're going to have a very dense habit to them. So they're, that just means they're nice and tight and compact. They're not going to be real leggy and airy by these pictures, as you can see you're really going to see a nice big presence of these in your garden. Large flowers on them. We love large flowers. Really strong stems. We're not going to be floppy at all. 
but that one of the keys to success with your pentsimmons is that you have that full sun, minimum of six hours, and well-draining soil. They do not like to sit in those areas that stay really wet. So that means, unfortunately, we are not gonna have our summerifics and our pentstemons sitting side by side because our water requirements are different. Put your pentstemons in those areas where it tends maybe a little bit drier, well-draining, and your summerifics, of course, can go in those nice damp areas. But again, these are just some of the perennials that I am super excited about for 2024. Um, as always, we will be bringing you uh, new plants and new exciting things as we discover them and as they become available. So hopefully you have found a couple of plants that you are excited about to add to your garden. As always, we so appreciate you. You have a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.